Okay, today what we are going to do is we're going to start learning how to use diodes and circuits. So, uh, up to now we've been looking at the, the physics of the diode. So it allowed us to understand uh, why we have these different states. So equilibrium is just a diode sitting by itself, no voltage across it, so there should be no current through it. Uh, reverse bias, we apply uh, the positive potential um, to the end side or the cathode side of the, the PN junction and you get a very very small current through that and under forward bias we switch the polarity around um, and in this orientation the current is going to be exponentially dependent upon the voltage that you're applying across the dial. So the current is going to increase very quickly uh, with small changes in voltage. And we saw why that happens. It had to do with uh, the, the depletion region widening or um, the width decreasing and then increases in those currents. So all of this is described by this diode equation here. And in fact, even the, um, the reverse bias current is predicted by uh, this equation because if we plug in a negative voltage, uh, so V is the voltage across the diode in this equation. So if the voltage becomes negative, we're going to assume the positive polarity is always in the orientation of the forward bias. So if the voltage becomes negative in this uh, exponent, exponential part of this function, what's going to happen? E to negative something is going to be something big, small, small, okay? So we'll just say that if, if you reverse bias it, uh, to a first approximation, this will go to zero. And so everything in this bracket, it will just be negative one. And so the current through the diode, I, is going to be equal to negative IS. And that's what's shown on this graph over here. And the value of this IS, uh, we haven't gone through any problems that have numerical values yet. But it's going to be something very, very small um, on the order of like picoamps or so. Depends on the diode. This is, this is a diode dependent. Okay, but now that we know all this, we still haven't done anything useful with a diode. And that's what uh, distinguishes this class uh, from 324. So in 324 you learned about what's going on in diode but you didn't really look at circuits um, that use the diode. In this class we're sort of assuming you know what's going on with the physics of the diode um, and now that we have the equations for what the current is doing based on the physics we're going to do something with these diodes and circuits. Okay, so the simplest case we're going to look at first um, when we look at diodes and circuits is going to be the ideal diode. So in this case, we're going to, for now, uh, make a very simplified version of that um, diode equation. And we're just going to say that if the diode is in reverse bias, there's going to be no current flowing through it at all. The current will be zero. If the diode is in forward bias, then, um, and 
indefinite amount of current can flow through it, and there will be no voltage dropped across the diode. So that's what the ideal uh, diode approximation is. You can also think about it in terms of uh, like a switch. So if the diode is in reverse bias, it's like an open switch. So the open switch will have no current through it, but you can, could have an indefinite amount of, of voltage across it. So in reverse bias, I'm not sure exactly which voltage I'm at. Uh, until I put it into a circuit. And then in forward bias, it's like a closed switch where I have an indefinite amount of current flowing through it. It depends on the circuit it's hooked up to and no voltage across it. Okay, so this is for the ideal diode. And this approximation uh, helps you to very quickly look at circuits and see what's going on. So we'll take a look at a couple of examples of these kinds of circuits. So one way that you can use diodes is you can use diodes to make logic gates. And we'll look at um, how these logic gates function by looking at that ideal diode. Okay, so if you have uh, two or more diodes, in this case it's, it's a three input OR gate, you can set them up in this way and the voltage at this node will be the output of your OR gate. Okay, so if you make diodes in this configuration, this will realize a digital logic OR gate. Uh, everyone in here has taken 260? Anyone hasn't taken 260? Okay, so you all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's look at um, how that's working. So um, we will use uh, TTL voltages, so that means 5 volts is equal to a binary 1, 0 volts is equal to a 0. So let's say um, on my input 1, I put 5 volts, so this is a binary 1. On input 2, I put a 0, and input 3, I put a 0. So what should my OR gate tell me? At the output. This should be 1, okay, but since I'm saying that 1 is 5 volts, I know that that, that voltage should be 5 volts. So how do I get 5 volts at this node right here? Well, I'm going to assume that this 5 volts that I'm applying at uh, input 1 will forward bias this diode. Let's call this diode D1. Okay, so I can have current flowing through this diode from my 5 volt source. I will have, it, I'm going to assume an ideal diode, so there will be no voltage dropped across here. And so that means voltage at this side is 5 volts, voltage at this side is also 5 volts. And that current let's call this I1, will flow through resistor R and generate 5 volts at the output of my OR gate. Now if I look at the other diodes, let's call this diode 2, diode 3. Okay, and diode 2, I have a higher voltage. I have 5 volts at the cathode side and I have 0 volts at the anode side. Okay, so this side's at higher voltage, this side's at a lower voltage. So if I did have a current through this diode, it'd want to go that way, opposite to the direction of the diode. So that would mean that diode 2 is in reverse bias. So I know that this current is zero. Okay, same thing, same situation with diode 3, because that's in the same orientation. So that current is also zero. Okay, so I can re so with this configuration, everything looks fine and checks out, and I'm realizing my logic function because one of my inputs uh, has a binary one, and so my output is equal to one. And if I 
switch that around, you could do the the same kind of argument. Um, like if I made v1 0 and v2 1, same. Look at it. Same thing would happen. I would still get an output of one, and my output would always be one unless all of my inputs were at zero. Any questions on this? Okay, let's look at uh, another logic gate example. Okay, so this is an AND gate. Uh, again, three inputs. We'll connect the diodes in a slightly different manner. And let's look at that with the, that same uh, TTL uh, kind of logic. Okay, so over on the right, I'm setting V1, V2, and V3 all to 5 volts. So this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So my output here should be 1 or 0? 1. Okay, so that means my output here. is going to be 5 volts. Um, so, so why is that the case? Uh, now, in, in this case, uh, my, my voltage here, if I had some current, flowing through this resistor. Then that means that my voltage at this node would be something less than 5 volts, right? Because I'm going to have some voltage drop across that resistor. Okay, so that means that uh, the, the cathode side of all these diodes would then be at a greater voltage um, than the anode side. So they're all going to be reverse biased if I had some current uh, flowing through this resistor. Um, and these diodes can't be in forward bias because the voltage at, at this side is at most going to be equal to the voltage at the anode side, right? I can't have the situation where um, uh, the voltages V1, V2, and V3 are going to be at a lower potential than the right-hand side. In other words, my current arrows aren't going to point that way in any situation because I'm, I'm putting 5 volts um, at V1, V2, and V3. Okay, so that means the only way to, to satisfy this circuit and not violate Ohm's law or this approximation that we're making um, for the ideal diode is if this current is equal to zero. Okay, and I also don't have any currents uh, flowing through the diodes. So that means that the voltage at this node at the at the output is going to be the same as um, my voltage up here because there's no voltage drop across the resistor. Okay, so that's 5 volts. Now, and, and, I get a, and I get an output of 1. Okay, now let's make V1 and V2 equal to 1. I'm going to disconnect V3 from that node and I'll make it go to ground. Okay, so V3 is now going to be uh, an input of zero. Okay, what do I expect to my AND output will be? Zero, because my inputs are 1, 1, and 0, so my, my AND output should be zero. Okay, so that should be zero volts. Now, does that make sense? Well, V3 is is going to be at the lowest potential in the circuit ground. So I kind of expect that 
um, I'm going to have some current flowing through that diode because I'm guessing that uh, the potential at this side of the diode um, will allow the current to flow that way. Now according to our, I, our ideal diode model, um, if this is forward bias, that means the voltage drop across this is zero. So this point in the circuit uh, should also be at zero volts. And now I have some non-zero current uh, flowing through that resistor. And so all of my, my five volts is, is dropped across this resistor. This node is at zero volts. And uh, these two diodes, let's call them D1 and D2. There's five volts on the cathode, zero volts on the anode. So these two are reversed bias. Down's reverse bias, down's reverse bias. So they still have no current through them. So all my current goes through uh, my resistor R and through this bottom most diode. And the, the resistor R has all the voltage dropped across it. So my output of my, my AND gate becomes zero. Okay, so zero, zero, so it, it fulfills the AND function. I have one um, zero on my inputs, so my output becomes zero. And if I change uh, where that zero was on any of the inputs, my output would still be zero. So again, I'm, I'm fulfilling um, that AND function. So these are just uh, a couple of examples of things that you can do uh, with diodes. And right now we're just using the ideal diode model to analyze this. Okay, let's look at a simpler circuit. And use the ideal diode uh, model to figure out what's going on. Okay, so... The first thing that we have to do with our ideal diode model is we have to decide if the diode is going to be forward biased or reverse biased. Sometimes, just by looking at the circuit, you don't know. It could be either one. There's just not enough information for you to tell. So it's okay for this first step to just kind of guess and, and say, I think it's forward bias, I think it's reverse bias, and then start working out the problem, start solving the circuit, because at some point, if you made the wrong guess, then you can tell, because uh, you won't have the right KVL, or um, Ohm's law won't be satisfied, or something like that. Something's going to be wrong with your equations if you make the wrong guess at this first, first step. Okay, so... What do we want to guess that this diode is doing? Forward bias? Who says forward bias? Who says reverse bias? Most of you aren't guessing. So, so I said you can just you can just guess, but um, some of the times uh, a certain guess is better better than another one. Sorry, I just skipped the slide. Okay, so in this case, uh, guessing a forward bias is the best guess because uh, on the anode side, I, it, I probably have a higher potential than I do on the cathode side because the cathode side is ground. Okay, so, and that means current would want to flow through the diode in the direction indicated by this arrow I which corresponds to forward bias. So it probably is forward bias. Okay, so let's guess that it's forward bias. Um, throughout these lectures, I'm going to be saying, I'm going to be writing FB for forward bias and RB for reverse bias. Okay, so if it's forward bias, then what is the voltage V going to be? It's going to be zero. So V is the voltage across the diode, and we're saying this is an ideal diode, so under forward bias, there's no voltage across it. Okay, so that voltage is zero volts, and then let's find, uh, let me write down why. 
since it's an ideal diode. And now we can solve for the current. So what's the current going to be? Give me an equation. So we're just going to use Ohm's law. 5 volts divided by 2.5 kilo ohms. So that's 2 milliamps. Okay, so I have 2 milliamps of current going through my dial according to my ideal dial model. Any questions with this? Okay, let's look at a second example. So all I did here was flip the diode around. So now, what do we want to guess is the bias condition on the diode? Uh, probably reverse biased because my current wants to go from the higher potential to the lower potential and that is opposite to the direction of the diode. Okay, so if it is reverse bias, then what's the current through the diode? I'm not finding the voltage across the diode at first because I don't know if it's in reverse bias. Um, but I, I do know that the current through the diode is going to be zero for a reverse bias. Oops ideal diode and once I know the current through that is zero now I have enough information to figure out what V is so what is V what's this voltage across the dial I heard zero and five volts which one is it? 5 volts. So there's no current through the diode. That means there's no current through the 2.5 kilo ohm resistor. So there's no voltage dropped across that. So V should be 5 volts. Okay, any questions on this problem? Okay, so now let's add more diodes. Okay, so now we have three diodes uh, connected in parallel to a single resistor. And I have input voltages of different levels, 3 volts, 2 volts, and 1 volt apply to each diode. Okay, so now we need to figure out or we want to use the ideal diode to figure out what's going on in this circuit. Okay, so the question, first question, same as before, so are the diodes in forward bias or reverse bias? So this time I'm going to tell you the assumption, okay? So let's assume that dial D1 is forward biased and we'll check that later so we'll, we'll operate off of that assumption or that guess in the beginning and then we'll solve the circuit and, and check to see if, if that worked okay so if D1 is forward biased what's V? so that means no voltage is being dropped across dial D1 so the voltage at this node should be 3 volts. Okay, so if the voltage at this point in the circuit is 3 volts, what kind of bias do the other diodes have? So diode D2 has a reverse bias. How about diode D3? That one's also reverse bias because the voltage from both of these, the voltage at the cathode is higher than that of the anode. Okay, so uh, 
I'm going to have some current, uh, let's call this I1, go through dial D1 because I said that's forward bias. And this current is going to be zero. This current is going to be zero because I'm saying <coughs> that those are dial D2 and D3 are reverse bias. Okay, so if that's the case, then uh, what's I? What's the current I? Give me an equation. So by Ohm's law, 3 volts over 1 kilo ohm. So 3 milliamps. Okay, and let's check um, our original assumption that D1 was forward biased. So um, I have some current that goes through diode D1, and that's the same current that's flowing through this 1 kilo ohm resistor. That puts the other two diodes in reverse bias, so I don't have to worry about currents through those. So it looks like everything checks out. Okay, so I, um, the assumption that we made at the beginning um, looks like it was a safe one. Okay, let's look at, let's make a, a different assumption then and see what, what goes wrong. Uh, or first, is there any, are there any questions on this problem? <laughs> okay, so let's, we're going to look at the same problem but we're going to make a, a wrong initial assumption, okay? So my initial assumption is that diode 2 is going to be forward bias. Okay, so now that I assume that diode 2 is in forward bias, uh, what does that mean for this voltage V? So that means that V... Because it's an ideal diode, no voltage dropped across diode 2. So that voltage should be 2 volts. Okay, so let's check now what's going on with the other diodes. So diode D3, what's happening to diode D3? So that one is going to be reverse biased. Okay, how about diode D1? So diode D1, I have a, this is 2 volts at that point. So I have a lower voltage um, on the cathode side. It should, should be forward bias. But under the ideal diode model, I shouldn't have any voltage across here when it's forward bias. So I want this point to be at 3 volts. But I just said it was at 2 volts because of my original assumption. Okay, that's the same node. So that this same node I'm saying is at 2 volts and 3 volts at the same time. So there's something going on. There's something wrong here. And it all stems from that original assumption because if I didn't make this original assumption that D2 would forward bias, that means I'm not forcing this node to be 2 volts anymore. Okay, so because of that, I know that uh, this original assumption went, um, was wrong. Okay, so this is wrong. And I, I have to uh, reevaluate uh, which, which diodes are in forward bias. Okay, so that, that's what happens if you, if you make a wrong assumption. Or it's an example of what happens if you make a wrong assumption. Any questions? Okay, let's look at one more example. Okay, so again, we have three diodes in parallel, um, but now the, the resistor connected to them is connected a little bit differently. Okay, so again, we're gonna we're gonna start with uh, 
making our assumptions and uh, we'll start with the assumption that diode D3 is in forward bias. Why am I making that assumption? Uh, it, yeah, it has the lowest voltage. Well, because of the fact that it has the lowest voltage uh, on the, the cathode side, if any one of these diodes are in forward bias, it's probably this one. Because that means I can have the most voltage dropped across this resistor and still satisfy the condition for forward bias. Also, we can look at, um, you know, what if we did something like the, the previous example, and I said uh, D1 is in forward bias. That means that this voltage is at 3 volts. That puts D2 and D3 in forward bias. But then again, I have a conflict. That means this node needs to be 3 volts, 2 volts, and 1 volt all at the same time. Okay, so we'll just make the assumption now that D3 is forward bias. So if D3 is forward biased, then the voltage V is this one's forward biased. So the voltage at this node should be 1 volt. Okay, now if that's true, then diode D1 is under what bias condition? That's reverse bias. And diode D2 is also reverse biased. Okay, so there's some current flowing through here, but that current zero and that current is zero. So my current I will be what's the equation? This is not a 323 question, this is a 211 question. Five volts minus one volt over one kilo ohm. So four volts over one kilo ohm. So four milliamps. And again, it looks like our original assumption was okay because I have some current going through uh, my one kilo ohm resistor that goes through my uh, forward bias style D3 and no current goes through D1 and D2 because they're in reverse bias. Everything looks okay. Uh, sorry, what? Uh, which arrows? The current arrows? Oh, yeah, the current zero, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's how you can uh, use the ideal diode model, model to quickly figure out uh, what's going on in diode circuits. So besides the, the digital logic example <laughs> that we looked at, there's a lot of other applications uh, for diode circuits, and we'll be going through some of them. Uh, so you can use diodes to direct the flow of current in a circuit, since they'll only allow current to flow uh, one way. We will be doing this in lab, where you convert an AC signal to a DC signal. Uh, that process is called rectification. Um, you can use diodes to do things like uh, voltage regulation and voltage limiting. We'll, we'll, we'll see that um, in uh, these lectures too. Um, and also to add DC offsets and a little bit more specialized applications. So we talked about um, reverse biasing diodes to change their capacitance. 
And so that was for, for oscillators, for tunable oscillators. And the more specialized uh, types of diodes would be something like a photodiode or a light emitting diode. So those will detect light uh, or emit light. Well, these are all our various types of diodes. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about um, a little bit more complicated diode model. So not just this, this ideal model where there's either no current uh, flowing through it or an indefinite amount of current, but something a little bit more realistic. Because if we want to use it for any of these applications, we need a little bit uh, more realistic model of what's going on. Okay, so this is what the diode uh, IV curve looks like um, based on a, a silicon-based uh, diode. And this is a, a more realistic curve in that you can see on the reverse bias the current it looks like it's zero. There's some current there, but it's really, really small. And in forward bias, once you hit a certain voltage, which is called the turn-on voltage, um, since that current is exponential, that current increases very, very quickly for any small change in voltage across the diode. So it looks, it's an exponential curve, but it looks almost like a, a vertical line in this scale. And there's also something that um, we will talk about a little bit later, where if you put enough of a voltage in reverse bias across the diode, eventually you're going to get a lot of current to go through it. So a diode doesn't block the flow of current to an infinite voltage. Once you put a, a large enough voltage across the diode, it will let current flow in that, in that opposite direction. And that's called breakdown. But we're not going to focus on that right now. Um, let's take a, a little closer look at forward bias. So from this graph, we're kind of zooming in on that region right there, right where the, the curve starts to increase rapidly. And so if we zoom in on that, um, for silicon diodes, the current starts to increase above near zero at about half a volt and then once you get to about 0.7 volts that's when you you really start to get that that very rapid rise in current so half a volt is called the cut-in voltage um, 0.7 volts is, is the turn-on voltage where you have a, a dial that's that's fully conducting that's where you have a very large change in current or very small change in voltage across it um, if you look in the textbook for uh, the diode equation, you may come across uh, this form of it, where there is this uh, factor n in the um, exponential, in the denominator of that term um, in the exponential. Uh, this really is process dependent, so it depends on, on how you make the diode. So it, n equals 1 if your diode is made on an IC, and n equals 2 if your diode is a discrete diode uh, like the one in the lab. Um, for this class, we're just going to assume that, that n equals 1. Okay, so don't worry about that, that n factor there. And for this equation also, if we um, have a, a diode current that's much, much greater than that saturation current, then this one term doesn't really matter. It doesn't really make a difference. So you can approximate it to this equation. So this is, that equation approximates uh, the diode current once that diode current starts increasing rapidly. Okay, in reverse bias, um, that's this part of our graph. We only can actually see um, the, um, the current if I kind of make that scale a little bit larger. 
on the reverse bias side. So now we're not on the same scale as the, the forward bias curve. Okay, so if we go with our, our, our diode equation, start off with that, and as the voltage becomes negative, um, then like we said earlier, the diode current is going to be equal to about uh, negative IS, where IS is that saturation current. Uh, so theoretically, my diode current in reverse bias is going to be negative IS, uh, according to this equation. Now in real life, that diode current, there's a little bit more current uh, flowing through the diode than that theoretical value. But it's still a, a, a very small amount of current compared to forward bias. Okay, and then the other part of this graph that we're going to look at is breakdown. And so that's over here. And what that is, it's, it's sort of like forward bias, but when we have the, the opposite polarity. Because again, you're going to have a very rapid change in current with a very small change in voltage. Uh, that occurs at something called uh, VZK, where, where uh, that stands for the Zener voltage. And there's special diodes called Zener diodes uh, that are designed to operate in breakdown. But for other diodes, you don't want to operate in breakdown. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of, of the lecture part on diodes, when we start talking about zener diodes. For now, this is a bad thing uh, to have it going to break down. Okay. Um, for reverse bias, we said that the, the current is going to be about equal to uh, negative IS. Theoretically, and then in practice, a little bit larger than that. Normally, because it's so small, we just ignore it. Okay, so we don't really care too much about currents through the diode in reverse bias. In breakdown, we have a large current, or can have a large current in the diode. So we do care about currents at that point, but we're going to talk about that later. The other part that we have a large current is the forward bias. And so, we want to describe that current a little bit more. And there's different ways that you can uh, describe that, that forward bias current. So we know what the equation is, uh, but because it's an exponential equation, it's not that uh, convenient to calculate all the time. So if you want to simplify it a bit, that's what all these, these models are for. Um, they are, this, this is becoming less and less important because all of you are now carrying around calculators or you have, you know, you, you can simulate this on a computer where you're, you're taking the actual exponential equation and solving for it. But it still helps you um, to, if you know these, these alternative models, it still helps you to be able to solve the circuit quickly um, by hand and you even if you're going to simulate a circuit, you also want to do a very quick check by hand, usually, because if you made a typo in, in one of your numbers when you plugged it into the simulator, and so maybe your answer is off by like, like a factor of 10 or something like that, just because you, you had that typo, if you have no idea what the answer to that um, simulation is going to be, you're never going to catch that error. So it's, it's still a good idea to be able to know how to, to very quickly solve circuits um, to a good approximation. So the, the first uh, forward bias model that we looked at was the ideal diode model. Um, and we'll look at these other models as well. And we'll compare how accurate there are using this, this example circuit. Okay, So we'll just have a, a 10 volt DC source hooked up to a, a 1 kilo ohm resistor and then hooked up to our diode. And we'll use these different models to calculate uh, what the diode current will be and what the diode voltage will be. Okay, so for the ideal diode model, uh, this is a very good approximation if 
the voltages that you're talking about across the dial are much greater than uh, 0.7 volts because that means the dial uh, is fully conducting so you can have a large amount of current through it and that's what the ideal diode model is telling you. It's also useful if you just want to figure out is that diode on or is it off? Um, meaning is it is it forward biased or is it reversed bias? Okay so if we look at at our example circuit here and we do the um, ideal diode model uh, what's the voltage across this diode going to be? Is this diode forward biased or reverse biased? Forward biased. So the voltage across it should be zero volts. And if there's zero volts across that, that means that the diode current is 10 volts over one kilo ohm. So 10 milliamps. Okay, so that's the, the answers that we get if we use the ideal diode model. Now, we can build one more layer of complexity onto this. And we can say that, okay, my diode is going to have no current through it until I reach... Uh, that that fully conducting diode voltage so until I get to 0.7 volts I'm gonna have no current through my diode and then once I get to 0.7 volts then I can have an indefinite amount of current through it in other words I'm gonna replace so here's my here's my diode and I'm gonna replace that with with this model so this diode here is an ideal diode and I have a, a 0.7 volt um, DC source there. So I can't get this dial to be forward biased until I have 0.7 volts across these two terminals. That would give you uh, this, uh, this graph here. It's the ideal diode graph just shifted by 0.7 volts. Okay, so if we look at our example circuit here, my diode is still forward biased. So what's the voltage across the diode going to be? It's conducting some current through it. So this voltage is going to be 0 0.7 volts. Okay, and if that voltage is 0 0.7 volts, then what is the current through my diode? What's the equation? Uh, yes, so 10 volts minus 0.7 volts over a kilo ohm, so 9.3 milliamps. So this is a little bit, just a little bit more complicated than the ideal diode model, but it gives us a, a more accurate answer as well. So I have 0.7 volts dropped across my diode, and now I'm, instead of saying that my, my current in this circuit is 10 milliamps, I'm saying it's 9.3 milliamps. So that's probably closer um, to what you would measure if you actually built this circuit. Any questions? Okay, so then you can continue to build uh, your, your model to be more complica com uh, complicated. So this is the, the piecewise linear model, okay? So I still have some voltage uh, up to which I have zero volts, uh, sorry, zero current through my diode. And once I get to that voltage now, instead of saying that that line has an infinite slope, I'm saying to model that exponential, that line will have some finite slope. Could be really big, but it, it's still a finite slope. Okay, so 
In other words, my diode is going to be replaced by this model, an ideal diode, uh, some DC voltage, and some resistance, RD, that's going to give you the slope of this line once that diode turns on. Okay, so for our example circuit, uh, let's say, now it's getting a little bit hard, harder to compare this to the other circuits because I'm just making up some numbers here. But let's say that your diode, in order to model your diode, um, this VD naught was 0.7 volts and RD was 20 ohms. Okay, so what is uh, the uh, diode current going to be? How do we figure that out? Zero point seven divided by it's not it's not zero point seven divided by twenty because this is this is point seven volts here and my twenty ohms is there but I can do okay so it's gonna be uh this DC voltage minus the 0.7 volts and I divide by the combination of the two resistors that I have in the circuit R and this RD okay so that gives you 9.1 milliamps and then, it, then if I want to figure out what the diode voltage is the diode voltage this diode voltage VD is the same as this one, so it's the voltage across the ideal diode, which should be zero if it's forward bias. The voltage of this DC source VD naught, and the voltage across RD. Okay, so that means it's going to be VD naught plus the diode current times RD. Okay, so 0.7 volts, which is VD naught. We already figured out that the diode current is 9.1 milliamps, and we need to multiply that by 20 ohms. So it comes out to about 0.88 volts across the diode. Okay, this one is, is quite different from the other two models, uh, but again, it depends on, on what values you have for VD naught and RD. So this one is not an exact comparison between those other models. Then the final, uh, or the most complicated model, just goes back to that equation, and then it just becomes um, solving that exponential equation. Okay, so we'll talk about that, uh, not on Monday, Monday's a holiday, but on Wednesday.